Hello, welcome back to the Garibaldi Red podcast, a podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. I'm Max Hayes, your host, and as ever, joined by Forest journalist Sarah Clapson from The Post. Sarah, hello, how are you? Much better after last week and after the Fulham game, I'm sure. Yeah, much better than uh, than Thursday morning after the Fulham game, certainly. I'm doing good, thank you. Good. We should mention as well, Sarah, that your microphone has been lost in the post. So you are still on the classic headphones. And if this week couldn't get much worse with the Fulham performance, your microphone got lost in the post, eh? Yeah, typical uh, typical mail service, but hopefully we get there eventually and we, we get one delivered. Yes, definitely. Also joining us is a man that has scored 32 goals for Forest, 102 appearances. He still remains the only player to have scored a hat-trick in the Premier League. All three divisions of the EFL, the FA Cup and his country too. That is a stat. Don't worry, it's not Dave Asprey. It's Rob Earnshaw. Robbie, good to see you. How are you? I am excellent. I feel even better now I'm on this podcast. I've heard big things. Oh, great stuff. I mean, <laughs> Robbie, does that stat often come up in conversation with people? Do you get people always asking you about that stat? You miss one out, the League Cup. Yeah. I was <laughs> the, the League Cup as well. We can have that one in. Surely when that stat comes up, people must be like, how on earth did you manage to do that? And it, you're still the only player to ever to ever do it. Yeah, do you know what? That's the one thing that always comes up. And, you know, I've my background you know i've been all over the world uh different leagues different countries and everywhere i go that's the one thing that a lot of people still mention still now and um it, you know i it, over time it's taken me back because I, i'm always like wow like i have to kind of think about it because it's, that's me really you know it's that kind of feeling so it's uh it is special i i mean it's 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 amazing and it is crazy, like the only person to ever do that, <laughs> that you know. But uh, it's also uh, humbling as well. Um, for me, I, I always get. For me, it's the feeling of it's like the work that I put in. If you, if, you, if that makes sense, um, because for me, it's like when I was a kid, I always take myself. I'm 12 years old, taking the ball in front of the garage, uh, you know, annoying the neighbors, I, and I'm that kid. And I want to become a footballer. When I become a footballer, I want to leave something behind. I want to do something that some people can recognize as kind of special. And when I fast forward and I hear that type of stuff, it's that takes me back to thinking, yeah, like that's that's amazing because I did something. I, I was I was the work along the way for years and years and years. Um, it is worth it and you get results at the end of it. So that, that's what I always think when, when kind of people say that. So um, it is nice. It is special. It is a special stat because not just to score, but to score hat-tricks um, because that's what I was trying to do. That All my career, all my years, anytime I'm on the pitch, I'm trying to score hat-tricks. So to do that is like the pinnacle of a forward player in my position. Yeah, definitely. Also joining us is Forest fan, Dave Asprey. Dave, I'm sorry, I haven't really got much noted down for you as a bit of an intro. I'm just actually reading my notes here. So um, apologies, Dave, but I think you're probably the best person to kick us off on what you thought of the Forest Wolves game as well. Well, first of all, let me just say I'm in quite a lot of pain, Max, at the moment. I've got a bad back. Uh, I've been practising my Robbie Earnshaw goal celebrations and there's not a lot of room. There's not a lot of room in here and I'm 59. It didn't go to plan. So if there's any wincing, it's because I'm not a very good Robbie Earnshaw. I'm going to do the Sarah Clapson goal celebration next week. But Saturday, there isn't one. Um, <laughs> um, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, folks, was a, a distinct improvement upon Wednesday night. Wednesday night was as bad possibly as it could get. Um, but there was a definite sense of, uh, I wouldn't say it was a full redemption, but there was a definite sense of taking a step forward from Wednesday night. Um, I, I mean, Wednesday night, to just backtrack a little, Forrest actually saw it quite well. And, and But for a few inches, Divock Averigi could have put us in front. But from the moment that Alex Iwobi scored, it was just the most anonymous performance you could ever imagine. Um, so we went. I went to Wolves and they've been playing well with, with a sense of trepidation. But I actually thought in the, in the, in the round, it's a, a really good point, a difficult place to go. Manchester City have gone there and not come away with a point for, for perspective. And um, I thought Forrest, they weren't brilliant, 
but they weren't abject like they'd been on Wednesday night. And I thought there were at least this this time at Molyneux, as, as was not the case at Craven Cottage, there were performances to hang your hat on. There were certain individuals who, who gave a real good account of themselves. So I just think with all of this at the moment, there is a sense of perspective needed. Uh, and I think that some of this hysteria has gone a little bit over the top. I mean, by this time last season, we'd been done six at Manchester City, four at Leicester, five at Arsenal. We've had one real good stripe in this year, which was at Fulham. So, and we're outside the relegation zone, which is where we were last year. And I do think, even though it's a, a marginal gain, we're a better side than we were last year. It's not all rosy. There are a lot of people who want the manager changed. There are a lot of people who want the manager to be kept. And a diversity of views is healthy. It's a sign of a civilised society. But we have to keep it within the bounds of decency and respect. So I think, you know, Saturday allowed us to move to a, a slightly less um, fraught setting, if you, th if you like, Max. Yeah, Cooper made seven changes. Matt Turner, of course, returning to the starting 11. Nico Williams, Czech Cuarte and Forrest reverting to the 3-5-2 formation um, instead of the usual Cooper back four that we've seen recently. Sarah, watching from the press box, that must have just been, as Dave mentioned, a, a huge improvement from Wednesday night. Oh, it was night and day compared to, to Wednesday night. Completely different performance. Um, showed a lot of spirit, a lot of fight, a lot of character. Whereas on Wednesday, there was absolutely none of that. It, it was just a, a dreadful um, display. Saturday was a step in the right direction. Could have won. Um, had some really good chances. Had Kiate, had Toffolo scored a second. Could have come away with three points. Um, I think a, a, a draw was probably fair. Um it's just got to be a starting point. It's got to be um, a shift. I hope it is. I hope it's a sign that the mentality has has changed because on Wednesday it was it was just a complete and utter collapse. Obviously that that can hit players hard, and then it's about how they bounce back and how they respond. <coughs> the ones who were picked for Saturday responded very well, um, and I think there's a really big selection decision then to make for Friday night um, because players who started on Saturday put their hands up. Ryan Yates, um, I thought he did really well. Nico Williams was exceptional. There were some really good performances in there. So it, it's given the manager a big decision for the Spurs game. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Robbie, from, I suppose, kind of an outsider perspective, what have you made to Forest this season? Of course, we're in a little bit of a rot at the moment and need to get out, out of it quickly. But what did you make of the Wolves game and what you've made of Forest so far? Well, to be honest, I was very optimistic at the beginning. Um, I think, listen, it's been a tough week, yeah, of course, a t tough few weeks, to be honest with you. What is it, five out of seven, I think they've, they've lost. Uh, so it's been a tough few weeks. But to be honest with you, uh, um, I, I agree that I think we are a better team. Forest are a better team right now and, and this year than last year. So I think, especially the first few games, um, probably the first five or six games, I was thinking, you know, I like what I'm seeing. There's a progression because all, always you want to kind of, that like first season in the Premier League is tough. Lots going on. You're trying to find, you know, what, what works, what doesn't. The manager's trying to figure things out. Players are trying to figure things out. New signings that second year. And I like how competitive Forest have been this year. I like how uh, aggressive that they are. And um, I think we've got a good squad as well. I think it, it, I think it's a very good squad. But I think there's, there's just the consistency. We can't find the consistency. You know, that, for example, you go and lose 5-0 uh, at Fulham. Then you bounce back against Wolves. That is kind of sums up for us the season pretty much this week. And that's where I think how difficult it, it has been. I, I just wonder, I mean, I was always watching and I, I always wondered... Steve, Steve Cooper always kind of strikes me as he's still trying to figure out his best team, still trying to figure out what's the formula? How, how, how can I get these players to, to just be more consistent? And not just kind of always just the signings and the, and the players, but I, I just feel like just as, in his tactics as well, sometimes he's played with the back three, sometimes he's played with the four. Um, so there's always like different things where I'm thinking he's still trying to kind of figure it, figure things out. But listen, overall, I think good team. Can they stay up in the Premier League? Absolutely. Are they good enough? Yes. Good players, good squad. Yes, absolutely. All those things. I just, 
I think it it might just take a little bit of time. Robbie, just touching on that, as a player, how difficult is it when you've played and, and managers have constantly changed teams and maybe you were involved with the team or, or you weren't, you were often left out. How difficult is it to find that consistency for a manager and how and how does that affect the players in the dressing room, I suppose, as well? It is it is difficult, you know, because as a player, you're there, you're coming in and, and what the people don't see is, you know, whether you're playing or not, you're in every day. Every, we're all in every day. We're training. Everybody's pushing for the next game, the the next couple of games, the next few weeks. Everybody's always working towards that. And then you only really finding out maybe sometimes the day before, a couple of days before, an hour and a half before, when who's actually playing and who's not playing, who's going to be on the bench, who's going to affect the game straight from the start, who's going to be affecting it from the bench, all of those things. So. As a player, it's always difficult in that, in those situations. But at the same time, you're ready. You, and I think it is it, it's it's tough because what you're trying to do is give everything for the team, give everything and and get results and and do well. For example, forward players they're trying to score goals, they're trying to make the difference. Defenders they're trying to get those clean sheets. So there's all of these things going on. But it is very very difficult. I always see it this way. It always comes back to stay in the team, play well enough as a player, play well enough that the manager says, Phew, wow, that, that, that level, his level of training, his level of playing, I've got to minimum consider him to be on the bench, but he, he, I've got to consider him to, to start. And I think that's the, kind of the level for every player. And I think that's, uh, that's what you've got to have. You, you've got to have that mentality of, I want to be playing. I want to be playing every single week. But when I do play, I want to. I want the shirt. I want to play every single every every single week. So that is the level, and it's been difficult. It, it has been difficult. I think difficult for some of the players also because what's happened is we've had a full dressing room. You know, twenty, thirty players in the dressing room. Um, so many players, and what happens in that dressing room? Sometimes when you get too many players in the dressing room, and so many bodies and so many options and someone playing, someone not playing, it kind of is also disrup um, disruptive to the, to the players sometimes, because that's why, you know, the, the Klops, the, uh, the Pep Guardiola, they like to have 23, 24 players. And that includes two or three from the, from the, the fringes, so to say. And then you can add up numbers, youth players, young players, ones that you can kind of bring up from the academy and, you know, get a bit of training experience, be on the bench. Uh, but your core is about 22 players. But I think that's the, the difficulty part from the last year and a half in, in this Premier League is that forest dressing room has been full. And I think what you what I would like to see is start tapering that down to what is the core forest squad as players. And decisions have to be made, no problem. But that's like any football club. But I think that is also difficult inside a dressing room to be able to juggle in so many players, so many you know people coming in and out. You know, I think that's also very, very difficult. In, it's a it's a very interesting insight. Um, right, let's go to the fans. We put a call out on social media for your voice notes and videos, and Charlie got in contact. And here's what Charlie had to say: I'm really, really pleased after yesterday's result. I think one one against Wolves was. It was fantastic after a really terrible week um, and I was, was really worried before the match that if we'd lost badly, you know, 2-0, 3-0 or worse, if we hadn't put in a performance, that that would be the end of Steve Cooper. Um, and I think what's fantastic now is that we've got an opportunity on Friday to show Steve Cooper how much he's loved by the whole city of Nottingham. And that's a chance that we didn't know that we would get. Um, I think just other positive from yesterday, I think Neko Williams, he put in a shift. He was quick, he put his foot in, and he was creative setting up that goal. I think Toffolo, to see him get his first goal in the Premier League, um, and he could have had a second as well. I think that's really positive. And Mangala drifting past the midfield like it was a mid-90s, Stan Collymore was a really beautiful moment. Um, I think yesterday's the foundation. Um, there's still big questions for our season. You know, we're back at five in defence again. Are we back in last season's style of play? Um, I think right now we just need to just steady the ship and just build on our foundation and maybe those questions need to be answered in the future. Um, Friday night, 
So I think it's going to be showing our love for Steve Cooper. I think the city ground is going to be electric. Um, it's going to be so much support for the side. I think Brennan Johnson coming back is just going to add a bit of spice to the proceedings. Um, I think Neko Williams against Brennan Johnson, an all Welsh kind of battle, that's going to be fascinating to see. Um, but I'm really hopeful that we can get a result out of it. I'm really positive about that after yesterday and, and bring on Friday, really. Charlie, great video. Uh, Charlie's partially deaf as well. He comes from a family of deaf Forest fans. So lovely to see. Dave, did you agree with everything he said there? Um, and, and he talks there about the pressure that, that Steve Cooper's under. But for me, watching the game in the away ends, I thought that the players played for Cooper. They showed much more fight, much more passion, desire. And it looked to me like he picked a starting eleven that were really going to put their bodies on the line for him. Absolutely, Max. I mean, there's been this talk about the dressing room being lost. Now, you know, those of us outside the dressing room, all we do is make assumptions from distance. Uh, anybody who thinks the dressing room's lost, might I draw their attention, my lud, to Exhibit A, which was Harry Toffolo's post-match interview. Go and say to Harry Toffolo, that dressing room's lost, into Harry? And Harry will tell you a different story. And Harry himself is a sign that the dressing room's not been lost because his improvement is marked. He's been through his own personal issues. Harry Toffolo fronted up and faced those issues and he was honest about them. And now Harry Toffolo, in my view, is becoming the most improved player in our squad. And he's a good spokesman. So if you think the dressing room's lost, just go and sit down and have a chat, a cup of tea with Harry Toffolo, and he'll tell you otherwise. And I think the point that um, was made on the voice note is right. Nico Williams set a tempo. He put his body on the line. He'd not been in the side for ages. Now, if the dressing room was lost, would he have come in and played like that? No, he'd have sulked and, and walked away. I mean, you know, we're talking about a group of human beings. You're not going to get a complete unity of emotions and feelings. There's going to be, you know, one guy over here thinking one guy, you know, thinking one thing, another guy over there thinking a different thing. But what I saw on, on Saturday was I saw a, a, a group of human beings who knew themselves that Wednesday night was abject and not a reflection on what they want to do. And just as they did... When they beat Villa, they came out and said to us, look, we're as unhappy about the Luton um, fall-off as you lot are. And they put in a shift against Villa. And they came out on Saturday at Molyneux and said, we're as unhappy about Craven Cottage as you lot are. And I thought, you know, they, they, they put in a in a show of unity and they battled hard against against a side in better form than we've been. And I thought it was it was a credit to them. And, and the thing is, the, the supporters, it seemed to me, appreciated that. I mean, we're, we're stretched along the whole length of Molyneux on that side of the ground. And, and there's, a, you know, certain Forest fans were in a different hemisphere to certain other Forest fans. It was that far apart. But the feeling was, I never heard, I never heard a Cooper out chant. I had not seen a Cooper out banner. In fact, Max, I've not heard a Cooper out chant in either the city ground or an away ground this season. And I've not seen a Cooper out banner anywhere. And I've been to every game. Now, is it that the Cooper Inns, uh, are going to matches and the Cooper outs are sitting at home. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe they need a keyboard. I don't know. It's just that the truth of the matter is whether you're Steve Cooper in or Steve Cooper out, both views are valid. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Where we're all unified is we all love Nottingham Forest Football Club, and what unifies us even more is we are none of us, Mr. Evangelos Marinakis, because we're all we're all powerless. We're all sprouting hot air into the ether. If a decision is going to be made, it's going to be made by Mr. Marinakis and none of us. So we're all united in that. Uh, but I do think um, heading towards Friday night, it's a, it's a good game for us, actually, because I watched Tottenham yesterday and they're coming off the back of an excellent performance against a Champions League side. And I, I'm always happier, in a way, when Forrest are written off. You know, against Luton, Burnley, Brentford, Sheffield United, everybody's like, this is in the bag. We only have to turn up to beat these. We play Aston Villa and we put in a performance. And I think Friday night, and like was said, <laughs> Brennan's coming back, which adds a little bit of nuance to it. Then I'd, I'd be happier for Forest to be written off. In the days of Brian Clough, no no team was written off more than Nottingham Forest. And it won a league, league cups, European cups. And it was this business of being the underdog. And I just think Friday night might be ideal for that. But... Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting if if those who want to see Cooper out, which is absolutely, again is absolutely fine, if they want to come and state their point of view. Please do so, you know. But I have yet to hear it. Now, 
my hearing's not great, as you know, Matt. So I, I'm partially deaf as well. I've, I've got no right ear, so maybe I'm not a not a you know a, keer, a coherent judge. But I, all I see I, I, at Fulham, I was truly astonished. I stood there at half time feeling concussed, and then I kind of thought this is going to go really nasty, and it didn't go nasty. It was almost like that that that, that uh, there were two there were two Forest teams at Craven Cottage. The one on the field was distinctly average. The one in the stands was magnificent. And it's almost like they looked at the manager and thought, this guy's having a bad night. They are kind of letting him down. And the, and the kind of affection and the compassion and the empathy for Steve Cooper from that end of the ground, you know, was, was incredible. If you think that Roy Hodgson the same night got unbelievable pelters from his ground at Crystal Palace, you know, it, it, it's like, in a way, it would be less complicated, Max, if everybody was, let's get rid of Steve Cooper, then, you know, Evangelos Marinakis could go ahead and make his decision and that would be it. But the love that Steve Cooper's getting is making it slightly more difficult situation because it's like it is maybe going to be rolling on, rolling on, rolling on. So it's it's very strange, really. But it's 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 testament to them. I mean, for me, I'll never forget Wembley. It was astonishing. I I, I can't I can't turn on a guy because I've still got that great memory, and and so he's got a lot of a lot of credit in the bank. Results do have to improve. They have to be better. We haven't we haven't won for ages now, so it's not it's not all rosy. But I just think Tottenham, because Tottenham will come thinking they've only got to turn up and win after what they did yesterday, and that, that's probably a good time to catch them. But the City Ground will be. Let's hope it's really hostile to Tottenham, not to our manager, but to Tottenham Hotspur, and that's the way to beat them. It really, this week really shows how special Forest fans are and how special Forest is as a football club. Because when, you're, when you've lost 5 mil at Fulham away and it's ugly, it's not great, all of those things. But the love for the manager and the, like we said, the compassion, the understanding, it's not been seen before, <laughs> you know? I think th that understanding from, do you know what? We've lost 5-0, but we're still together in this. I love that because that was a show of something very, very different because way too much. And I, I'm, I loved it because I see way too much from most football clubs and most fans to just turn toxic without thinking, careless, doesn't matter. I, I, I just want to throw my anger out there. But landing of where we've been, what's happening, and are we still together in this? Yes, we are. Let's show that. And I thought that was brilliant. I thought it was it was an amazing show of absolute trust, love, care, compassion, all of those things within the football because it's too easy to be toxic, but it's very hard and brilliant when you can just show that compassion in the moment and kind of bring yourself together inside the moment. So I thought it was, it was brilliant for a, a, a fan base to just show their love. And you could see Steve Cooper was, you know, pretty much apologizing from the heart. And he, he, I mean, he, he owned it. He pretty much just said, you know what? Th that's on us. That's on us as a manager, as a staff, as players. That's on us. And the fans were like, no problem. We're, we're with you. Let's go again. Let's go again against Wolves. So I love that, and I, I, I wasn't at the Wolves game, but I believe it was the same again at, at the Wolves game because that sets it for Friday night now against Tottenham. That sets it up because I, I, Forest are very different away to at home, but at home and you're playing Spurs and it's Brendan Johnson's coming and all, all of those things, you know, the story that we'll kind of bring up this week. But Forest, you know they're going to come out and, and, and go for it. On Friday night, and and that's what the football club is about, and that's what you everybody wants to see. Definitely, some really nice points there, Sarah. Um, if we kind of look back at that that Wolves game, and I think it was standing in the away end, kind of jubilation when Toffolo headed it in, almost a little bit of disbelief, um, and a certain song mm -hmm. ran out in the away end that we won't repeat, but it went along the lines of how must you be Forrest to win it away um, and, and I think I think that 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 was the shock and then kind of 10 15 minutes later uh, it was kind of typical Forrest really and an inability to hold on to a lead which we've seen numerous times this season probably one of the issues that needs to be fixed 
urgently by Steve Cooper's results must improve. It's 40 points, Sarah, dropped from winning position since we returned to the Premier League last year. It's 14 points already this season. If, of course, you know, Steve Cooper is the is the man to turn this around, it's it, it's a difficult task to get the players to to kind of stand up to that and, and, and face that, hang on a minute, kind of this inability to hold on to leads obviously needs to be addressed quickly. Yeah, it, it definitely does. And I mean, Robbie will know more than any of us, I guess, that it can affect your mentality. If you start thinking, oh, we've lost a lead however many times. Oh, now we've got in front. Oh, no, what's going to happen? Players are human beings. It's bound to affect them. Um, it's about getting over that hurdle, I guess, and ensuring they have the right mentality and the right tools to cope um, with going in front and being able to hang on to it. It is something that needs to be looked at. Um, it, it's... I think Saturday was going back to basics. It was getting back to being hard to beat, being um, tight at the back, changing the formation because of that. And it was kind of a a needs must, I think. Whether, I I don't think it will go back to a a four on Friday. I wouldn't be surprised if it it stays the same formation because there's that base now to build on. I think a back four is Steve Cooper's preferred formation. It's what he wants Forrest to be, a back four team. Maybe there was a feeling of trying to change it too quickly because of all the changes, because of the players that have come in over the summer. Players like Sangare that are still adapting to the Premier League, that are still finding their feet. Maybe it was done too quick. Maybe it's a case of having to to go back, uh, row back on things and get back to doing what Forrest did well last season to get over the line, which was being hard to beat. Uh, and sometimes it's it's needs must. Everybody wants to progress. Everybody wants to, to move forward and um, show development. But you have to pick up points first. Forest haven't been doing that. They needed to address that. So it was kind of taking a step back. Hopefully then it's, it's getting back to how they were at the start of the season. Because the start of the season, as we mentioned right at the top of the, the, the podcast, was really positive. It was really encouraging. There were some really good performances in there. Didn't always get the right results, but the performances were were something um, to be really positive about. I think what was quite alarming was how quickly it fell away. Even if you go back, I mean, the Villa game seems like an age ago. It wasn't that long ago, but it dropped off so quickly from that that it just seemed like everything kind of spiralled and everything became heightened. And I think you forget what it was like month, a few months, weeks ago, where it was more positive and there was a lot of encouraging signs. It's been able to get back to that. I think the the instability and the uncertainty around the, the managerial situation can't help. Players are going to know what's going on. They're going to know the manager's under pressure. They'll know that there's talk about his future. That's bound to play on their minds um, and it's bound to affect how things are it, players are human beings steve cooper's a human being you, you you do as professionals you try to put it to one side i'm sure and you you have to do that to an extent but it must have an effect it must be um it must be a distraction that you could do without and it, it must be something that you, you you can't keep going you can't keep continuing with that and um, you need some kind of certainty and, and stability because that's how you progress yeah, let's see what Forest fan Max had to say after the game. He sent his video to our WhatsApp number. Yeah, one one draw away at Wolves. Just a brilliant response uh, after the total shambles of the Fulham game. Uh, Cooper played players that he can trust, which has been not many of the summer signings. Um, Sangare and Dominguez hang your heads in shame, and uh, Kiate, Yates, Nico Williams, Harry Toffolo. Morgan Gibbs White in the middle were all brilliant, I thought, uh, against Wolves. Um, Nico Williams was fantastic when he came on against Villa and like almost topped the rankings for the week in terms of interceptions and tackles and so on. So, yeah, brilliant. I think, you know, Steve Cooper in, big game, under the lights, on the telly, against Spurs. We can do it because Spurs, they're not all that. And uh, Alanga... Morgan Gibbs White playing the balls out to Alanga and Callum Hudson Odoi will tear them apart. Come on, you Reds! 
Very optimistic there um, from Max. Maybe it's just a Max thing. Um, <laughs> Dave, I suppose when you think about Forest on a whole this season and you think about the improvements that, that need to be made, but there's one thing, and, and you massively touched on it with the Cooper loving the away end, is that the expectations are different this season and we've touched on it in this podcast numerous times and we spoke to Gemma when I spoke to Lisa and Callum as well last week and and for that apparent reason expectations are slightly different do you still think those expectations are a little high Max there talking about you know we need to turn this round and, and, and Cooper in um but where where do you realistically think the Marinakis family would be hoping that Forrest would be finishing this season Dave well, I, I, from my distance, Max, I believe Mr. Marinakis has Brighton and Hove Albion as his blueprint. That's what I think. Um, I think he likes the idea that they get Thursday night European football. I think he gets the idea that they're up there cocking a snook at the big boys, if you like, at the top, playing really good football. But if we're going to compare Nottingham Forest to Brighton and Hove Albion, might I offer the fact that Brighton and Hove Albion and their four, first four um, seasons back in the Premier League finished 15th, 17th, 15th and 16th. Brian and Hove Albion paid their dues to get to where they are now. And when it happened, I think under Graham Potter, it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was like Brighton are muddling along, you know, near the bottom. And then all of a sudden they blossomed. They kind of came out of their chrysalis, if you like. We are one and a bit seasons in, in, into our tenure in the Premier League. And it is going to take time. Me personally, and and I'm probably going to get flat for it. I'm probably going to get flat for it. Even me face and me glasses and anything. So <laughs> bring it on. Um, is that my? I just wanted to be a Premier League team again, and I want to be a. I want to be a Premier League team. Us to be our family, my my club to be a Premier League team for another season next season, and then another season after that. And if it if it takes gritting your teeth and playing in a way that you don't really want to, then I'll be happy for that. I just want to be in a... I'd rather... I mean, the thing is, Forrest, I think, have still got this slight, slight identity crisis. They came up last year. They started by playing the kind of open, free attacking football that they played in the championship and which had served them so well. And boy, did they get found out. It, 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 came, it culminated in Leicester away which was a pretty shabby performance. It was then followed by the dourest of draws against Aston Villa. We're in a similar situation. We've just followed a 5-0 with a, dow a relatively dour draw at Wolves. My view is that, that last season was a 38-game pre-season, if you like, as Robbie has touched on. You know, so many players in the door, so many players getting to know each other, let alone any, any kind of style of play or any system. It is not, it's like you've got all these jigsaw pieces, but you have to work out how they fit together. It takes time. It isn't FIFA. We can't just do it on, on a computer screen like that. It's not like that. So, and, and what, what I loved about Forrest last year was people moaned about the low block. He's playing boring football. He's doing this, that and the other. It kept us up. The low block kept us up. The game against Arsenal, 18% possession, which is a, a record low for any team in the Premier League. And a title contender couldn't work it out. They shuffled from side to side. We, we, we kept ourselves up on that day and we handed the title to Manchester City. And I thought Steve Cooper and Forrest last year said, we want to play this kind of rock and roll, sexy football. But they said, you know what, we've got to kind of play this grinding, dour football to keep us up. And they went out of their character. And I think that is still going on now because, again, the turnover of players means that you can't get to an established, settled base. A settled side is is, is a kind of the holy grail in football for any manager and any team. And Forrest are struggling to get there. It's going to take time. Me, I just want, I just give me 17th again. There is no cast iron guarantee that because you stayed up last year, you're then going to become like Crystal Palace or Brentford. It isn't going to happen. In fact, the beauty of football is everything, essentially, every team that's picked is a gamble. Every signing that's made is a gamble. You can throw two hundred million pounds at a team, and it's a gamble. Hell, there's a team have thrown half a billion at it, and they've got nineteen points and got beat at Goodison Park two 0 yesterday. There are no cast iron guarantees in football. Brian Clough always said, "I always expect the unexpected in football," which tells you there are no certainties. And he was the greatest of them all. The only certainty in football is that he was the greatest manager of them all. So 
it is going to take some time. We're going to have to grit our teeth. We're going to have to go through some like awful performances, some bad days. But all being well, we'll get there. I mean, the thing is, mate, there's a lot of people getting fretty you know. Now, if forests go down, what happens? It won't change me. I'll just go to matches. I'm still forest. You know what I mean? So let's just stay in this division. My, my expectation is, I mean, I, I'm still working out whether I think the recruitment is good enough. You know, some of them have been excellent. I mean, Taiwo is a perfect example of that. Murillo is an example of that. Some of the others need to start showing us, like Robbie said, it's consistency. A lot of hours, they'll have a good game and you start to say, well, they're a good player. And then they have like three or four weeks and I think, well, where are they now? You know what I mean? So it's about this. Forest need to find a settled side, some consistency and a base to then take the next step. And if it takes a while, it takes a while. It's not going to happen overnight. Interesting point, Dave. Um, reports came out on Sunday morning that Cooper was going to be given kind of another game uh, against Tottenham and that Marinakis was quite pleased of what he'd seen against Wolves. Robbie, in terms of when a manager comes under pressure as a player, I guess it can be difficult, especially if you've you've spent time with that manager over a few years and, and really built up a relationship with them. Um, but in a way also, are you are you shocked that, that Cooper is under pressure this season or, or can you understand, given that it's one win in 13, I think it is now? I can understand it. And listen, I, I believe that, and over time, my experiences have led to me, uh, to, for me to kind of feel this more that you you need the pressure the pressure is not pressure as in negative you need the pressure to be saying no no this is the level and i think it's a good pressure to be under um is he under pressure yes of course he's under pressure he's got to get results or you know the team's got to win all of those things yes but you need some kind of level some kind of measurement uh, for you to improve and exceed that. So I don't, you know, listen, I think Steve Cooper is a fantastic manager. Should he be at Forest? Yes, absolutely. I think he should be there. Uh, is the pressure there for him, you know, to do better, to get results? Yes, of course that's there. Um, but I, th I, st I still think they should stick with him. And I, th I thought it was brilliant last year when we kind of were in this little period of struggling, results were bad, and it was murmurings of, oh, is Steve Cooper, is this his last game? Kind of like this last kind of 10 days. Is this his last game? Maybe if he, you know, if he doesn't win this game, he's out. You know, all of these things were said last year. And then the next week, it was Steve Cooper, a new deal. It was almost like, whoa, a complete change. And I actually, I thought that was brilliant because what it did is it settled everything down it, it wiped away all the media pressure that we're saying and said, no, no, this is our guy. This is what we're going with until further notice. And it, it almost calmed everything down around the football club, the media, the pressure, the so-called pressure, and said, let's go for this season. We went and stayed up. It's great. A little bit kind of the last 10 days has kind of been that way. I hate this fact or this idea of being, oh, is this his last game? No, no, no. Give him five, six, give him till end of January and say, do you know what? You've got till the end of January. Let's see how, how we do not. Is this his last game? No, no, let's see how he does up until the end of January. You know, you've got a period of time. You've got the signings, you know, a few months later. And then let's say, okay, where, where are we at the end of January? And where's our season? How are we doing? Where are we in the league? Have we progressed? Uh, have we had that time to find uh, the next level? Yes. Okay. Great. Brilliant. Let's let's go again then. You know. So I don't like this. You know. He has one game left. He has two games left. I think it's a uh, it's a poor assessment of w what's happening and and what it should be. So listen, it it, it is very difficult. Uh, I, I I remember. Actually, uh, when I was at Forest, Colin Coldwood, uh, that first season when I was there, Colin Coldwood was the manager and he was under pressure. Of course he was for a, a couple of months. Results were up and down. You know, we just got promoted. I just signed. A couple of other players uh, just signed as well. And up, going up until Christmas, it was just pressure mounting. Results weren't, you know, great. And you could feel the pressure as a player and you do feel it. 
you feel the pressure as a player. Things are not quite running as smooth, you know, things, you know, too much kind of negativity around. And Colin Caldwell's get Colin Caldwell's uh, get sacked on Boxing Day, I believe. And as players, it was like, oh no, like we we we're actually just progressing here. We're 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 on the right path, and it is difficult for players. And one of the most difficult is then to just go bang. Let's start again. Everybody start again. Sometimes that's also just as difficult. You know, it's not just oh, you know, get a new manager and rip it up and start again and everything's rosy. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes for players as well, and inside a dressing room, it's like, oh no, we have to start again. We, we we've put in this body of work. Let's continue the progress. And listen, I think Forest have progressed from last year, so there is progress there. Um, but. Listen. There's always a level. There's always a level for football clubs and the owners upstairs to say you have to win games. Of course, that's there. But uh, you know, listen. The the I think Forest fans are making it very very special for Steve Cooper, but also uh, showing you know how good a football club can be, how supportive a fan base can be. Um, because they're liking what the fight that they're seeing, and it's not always about oh, as the manager lost the dressing room or not. Listen, that that's not how it works. You know how it works is you know players they come in they turn up. the The difference is the little details, and that is what we've seen from Forest this year. And and listen, I think it'll it'll be fine. Fingers crossed. Uh, right, let's go over to an, another voice now. Ollie sent us his opinion on the game as well as asking if we should uh, target anyone really in the January transfer window as well. Here's what he had to say. Hi guys, was at the game yesterday. Much better performance, uh, even despite my initial reservations about the team announcement, given that we were lacking a striker. Um, if Alanga had squared the ball to Gibbs White um, when he had acres of space in the middle, if Toffolo had scored his second header, and if Kiate had done better with his one-on-one -on, -one, on a different day, we'd have come away with three points. Still fully behind Cooper. What I'd be interested to know is, especially given yesterday and the fact that we didn't start with a striker and Wood came on and he didn't really do a great deal, what would you do in January? It looks like we're going to be shipping out a few defenders. Would you be targeting more strikers? And if so, uh, any punts? Uh, he did say punts there, that's punts with a P, uh, about January transfer window. Um, <laughs> Sarah, I suppose, I, I just wanted to clarify in case uh, in case we got uh, <laughs> shouted out on Twitter. Um, Sarah, I just wanted to, to kind of come to you with that question and more on the fact of, of, of Chris Wood. He's been a player that's been talked about uh, for weeks and I'm, I'm sure we'll get kind of Robbie's view as, as, as being the striker. <sighs> He, he, he came on, I mean, he didn't have long in the game, kind of a, a good 10 minutes. Do you think Forrest's main main aim in January, whether Steve Cooper's here or not, it surely has to be a proven Premier League striker? It has to be a striker. They need a striker in. Um, I don't think you can get away from that. Um, a one year has been a huge, huge miss. And I think the problem at the minute is that Forrest haven't found a way of playing without him. I think I saw a stat the other, um, the other day about how many wins... They've managed when he has been in the team and when he hasn't. And the difference is so stark. It's incredible, really. And it just shows that over a long period of time, that problem still exists. Um, it's still something that needs solving. Origi hasn't really um, made much of an impact since coming in. I know most of his appearances have been as a sub, which, which probably doesn't help. But he hasn't really put his hand up to, to be the, the kind of replacement, if you like, for one year while he's out. Would I think Forrest haven't found a way of playing to his strengths? I think he can offer something. Um, he can score important goals. We've already seen that, but it's getting the best out of him. And I think the setup hasn't quite been right for that. It's again, it's something that needs addressing because Taiwo is still out. He's still going to be out for a little while yet. Um, but yeah, a striker is definitely needed. Somebody who can step up while Tyro's out and um, somebody who can help shoulder that burden somebody who can score goals and um, they're not easy to come by and they tend to be very expensive which is a problem in January um because every club is looking for a striker that can come in and get goals and everybody has FFP to contend with so it's not going to be easy 
but I think Forest definitely need they need something. They need some kind of attacking threat adding. Yeah, Robbie, I suppose as a striker, when you're going through a bad kind of patch of form as Steve Okarigi is, but I suppose more with Chris Wood, how do you get out of that? It must be a real challenge. And also, do you think in, in terms of January, Forest targeting a striker, would there be anyone that you'd actually be thinking that, that you've watched in the Premier League that would be available perhaps to target? Yes, um, I am officially getting fit and I'm coming back. I've had enough of this. <laughs> I've had enough yes. of this. Let's do it. Let's do it. I can't watch anymore. <laughs> Sign him up. Uh, Sign him up, Ross I, I can't watch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch cuts? people going through one on one and missing all the time. I've had enough. Bring your boots, Robbie. Bring your boots. Friday yes. night, mate. Get warm. Urge you Get warmed up. We're putting you on. Uh, <laughs> It's it's hard. It, listen, you you're gonna you're gonna come into January. Everybody wants a striker. Everybody wants the you know to bring in a striker that scores. All it, it is difficult. Can you find them? Yes, I think like we mentioned Brighton. Brighton are brilliant because Brighton uh, analyze what players and what qualities they're going to bring in based on what's there and what the idea of the manager is going to be. How they could bring in the best of them. So I think. You can bring the right player at the right price in, uh, and they will score goals for you. We got Hudson Odoi, we got Alanga, we got Wood. Uh, a one year's out for a, a little bit. You, you know, you'll be back at some point. Um, I actually think where we're lacking or where we could do better, and I, I, I like, um, I like our midfield players, but I think we can get more goals from midfield. Um, you know, Gibbs White, I think he can contribute more. I think be more effective. I think he's a, a talented player. He's impressed me since he's been at, at Forest. I think he can add goals. You know, I, I see him as a potentially somebody who can get, you know, 12 to 15 goals because he gets chances. He, he's creative. Yes, all of those things. But I think he can, the next level for him is the challenge of, can I get 12 to 15 goals? Because that's what I would be putting on him. I'd be saying to him, hey, I think your your quality, you play good enough minutes. Let's get you twelve to fifteen goals now. That's your challenge because then he takes it on on board. But I think from our midfield players, um, you know, Kuyate going in, you know, he's one v one the other day. Can we get more goals like that? Can we get more goals from midfield? Because I think the easiest thing is to always say, "Oh, we need a striker." Well, well of course we need a striker, of course. But I think everywhere else we can add more goals because. This day and age, and to be honest, football is the same. You know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, now. Yes, of course, you've got your core striker. He's going to get you goals, or maybe he's missing. But you also always needed your midfielders to get goals the rest of the time. You always needed, in a moment where you're 1-0 up, you then go 2-0 two, two up because your midfielder's gone through and, you know, they've created something. And then now you're 2-0 up. And your and your midfield gets one gets five, one gets goals, the other one gets twelve to fifteen. I think that's the where we're lacking because I think it's way too much to just say only the striker gets you the twenty goals or the fifteen to twenty goals, and that's it. Well, guess what? It's a team sport. The rest of the team have got to contribute as well. The rest of the team in moments where it's one nil, I've got to make it two nil on 3-0, you know, or the wide players, especially, you know, generally, we've always got generally, you know, the one striker and, and two wide players who are very attacking. It's got to be from those moments. So that's why I liked Toffolo when he scored the other day, because it was him saying, well, I'll go and get the goal. I'll go and arrive in the box and help my striker, help my midfield, help help the goal scoring, because it was a moment to take responsibility. So I love that. I, I think midfield, especially, is where I think we can do better as well. And the other thing is, with with Forrest, being in the Premier League and watching Premier League you know, every single week, watching the top teams, the thing that we can do better with is some of the players that are there also. Sometimes we need to control a game. Sometimes we just need to just possess the ball, not constantly... Oh, we've got the ball. Let's go and go as fast as possible, because the top teams don't do that. The top teams, are, even the Liverpool with their rock and roll football, 
they don't always just go and attack. At some point, they say, oh, let's, let's control it. Let's get a little breather. <laughs> let's get a little breather for a minute. Because the hardest thing, the thing that players make mistakes on is when they've run up here, then run back, then they've gone to tackle here, then they, they're shuffling across, and, and then mistake happened, go. That's how normally things happen. Sometimes you've got to be, you were attacked. No, no, let's control the ball here. Let's move it side to side. Okay, now let's go full half an hour because now it's open. Sometimes I think Forest, especially th uh, this year, they, they've been vulnerable there when they not controlling the goal, uh, controlling the game, as well as, of course, you know, when it's right, you know, it's a 4v3 goal. Um, when it's a you know five v four whatever and it's a transition corner kick whatever ball drops down and you can go of course go but there's the other times the rest of the game where you need to just have more control and then your midfielder pops up you know like the you know earlier in the season when Hudson Odoi scored that screamer was it uh, what game was that was that Burnley was it um, yeah, yeah, when he bent that in the in the in the top corner from from the left hand side that was a moment where. We were just, we countered, we threatened, but we analyzed the situation. Wait, wait, wait. And then all of a sudden he comes in and, and puts it in the top corner. So it it's moments like that I think Forrest can do better. Listen, I, I think for me, if I was in January, I would be analyzing three, three players, three positions. A, a defender, one defender, a, I think a midfielder from midfield that can, tr can control the game. I mean, I mean, technically very good. Technically, not not like tackling and and then sometimes keep possession, but a, a player that says, "No, no, give me the ball, control it," and almost like be that quarterback within the team and says, oh, "Hold, yeah. hold, wait, 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 wait." It's not the right time because Rodri does that brilliantly for uh, for Man City. Why why does he play every single minute of every game? Because he understands. He's he's so smart. But also, you give him the ball, he's not losing it. He's controlling the tempo and the speed and what's happening. And then they can be the top team. I think a central midfielder, I think we can do that. And of course, listen, if we can pick up a striker, yes, we pick up a striker. But I'd actually like the Hudson Adoys to say, give me that shirt. I'd love to see Wood say, I'm going to score three in four, three in four games. Three in five games, give me the give me the shirt, because we we've got some strikers there as well, and I think that's where we can improve a little bit as well. Yeah, certainly an interesting take, Dave. Shaking your head massively there, so obviously agreeing with in what total agreement. Said. The man and, speaks very sound. Yes, um, <laughs> and perhaps a player, Sarah, that that Forest have lacked, um, Brennan Johnson, since he's mm -hmm. kind of uh, obviously gone to Tottenham. Talking of him, he returns to the City Ground on Friday night. I won't say must win in case Jemo comes for me, um, but what I will <laughs> say is that it, it, it's another big game under the lights. It's on the TV cameras in front of a of a of an audience, and this will be a game where, of course, Tottenham are Tottenham, and they're a great side with with Postecoglou this season. But it will be. A, a game that, that Forrest will be hoping at least to draw, possibly three points would be an, an, an incredible result. But a game, Sarah, that could maybe really start to turn this rot around and, and keep Steve Cooper in a job. I hope so. I hope it's that, that Saturday proves to be a turning point and Friday is then a chance to build on it. Forrest do seem to raise their game when the big clubs come to town. We saw that a few times last season when there's an incredible atmosphere and the, the city ground's really rocking. It, can be a really special place um, and you just hope that Friday night is another one of of those games. Um, huge game, big opportunity, big chance for some players um, and it, it has the makings of being a really tasty one, particularly with, with Brennan coming back as well and, um, and everything that adds a context to around the game. Um, it's a really exciting one, I think, to look forward to. Definitely. I think that finishes us nicely. We could talk for hours. Um, Dave, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate your comments this morning. Thank you, Max. Pleasure. Lovely to see Sarah. Lovely to see Rob. Can I just say as well, mate, yep. um, big up big up to all the Gary Baldy Red crew that came before us. They did wonderful work. So Matt, yep. uh, Greg, Mikey, uh, Temps, Fletch, Gary Burtles, all those. They, they, they set us up really, really nicely. So 
a lot of gratitude to them for, for the work they did and uh, wish them all the best in their in their their new ventures but Definitely. Yeah, lovely. thank you for having us on Definitely. You. Squeeze, you between, squeeze between two legends here, Max. So it's a, a nice way. It's, it's a happy Monday. A happy Monday, mate. Sarah, Sarah, thanks for coming on. Thanks for putting up with Dave. Uh, um, squeeze next to three legends. So. Oh, oh B.A. <laughs> and, uh, and Robbie, thank you for coming on. Hopefully our, your expectations lived up to what you thought the podcast was going to be. <laughs> Oh, it, it exceeded all expectations. Brilliant. I mean, this is brilliant. <laughs> that does brilliant. No, honestly, really, really good. Uh, a pleasure to be on. Uh, very, very nice. And, do you know, sometimes it's just nice to talk forest and just, yeah. you know, talk what you think, what, what we would like, you know, personal opinions. I, I like that. So I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Definitely. You are most welcome. And that is one thing that we all talk about. Forrest, I will be back on Thursday morning uh, talking a Spurs preview. We'll be back next week for our main episode as well. Me and Sarah will be back with uh, a few new guests. Uh, remember to follow us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and on YouTube. Drop us a like and subscribe on YouTube as well. And we will see you next time. Fingers crossed on Friday for a good Forest performance. We'll see you then. Thanks. Thanks.